To start this design, you're going to sponge on your background, and I kept my background to my hairline and then following the contours of my face. Make sure that the color is the heaviest on the hairline and then fades out towards the skin. I folded my sponge in half so that it had a nice rounded edge to help me fade it into my skin more successfully. Next, I'm taking Light Green and Neon Green by Krivelin, and I'm going to put this in the deeper parts of my face, so um, on the outside corner of my eye and then right underneath my cheekbone. And then going out from there, I'm applying a scale stencil. And as I go across the stencil, I'm lightening the pressure on my sponge so that the stencil marks fade into my skin as well. I want it all to have a really nice fade and this will give a really cool airbrushed effect. As you layer the stencils and the colors, it looks really cool and it's easy to do. So just make sure to lighten the pressure on your sponge as you go out. The last color I'm gonna apply is the Dark Green by Krivelin and this is a snakeskin stencil by BAM, the BAM stencils. And I'm putting that right in the outer corner of my eye and then also I'm going to apply that to right underneath my cheekbone. And this will help create depth and interest. Now I'm taking the same scale pattern that I used with the lighter green, but this is on a smaller scale than the other one. And I'm going to fill in all the spaces with this. And the difference in patterns actually helps to add dimension and it makes it look a little more realistic and don't forget to apply it to your eyelid as well. I decided I wanted the background to have a little more depth and I already applied everything so I couldn't use black paint to do that so instead I used black powder and it's really great because it doesn't cover up your design it just deepens it nicely and you can use whatever black powder you have I just used a cheap eyeshadow here but apply that to the corner of your eye, to your hairline, and to right under your cheekbone. It's time to get started on the actual eye, so the first step is to wipe away any paint that's there, and then I'm putting a base coat of white because my eye is gonna be in yellows and oranges and reds, and they're not the most pigmented paints, so the white's gonna help those uh, colors to really stand out nicely. It does crease though because it's a very thick color so I use my finger to blend it out so that it's just a really really thin layer. So to begin the eye you're gonna apply yellow first and apply it over the entire area that you primed with white. Then I took a fluorescent yellow, the neon yellow, to make it even more bright and vibrant and I put that directly in the middle and then blended it out with my finger. Next take your orange and apply that to the outer areas of the eye. And finally use your red and put that on the very outside areas. And if you have a hard time getting your red to blend, then go back with some orange, as you see how I'm doing here, and the orange will work as a great uh, buffer to blend between the yellow and the red. Obviously, this type of design is a lot easier to do on somebody else. I had a hard time. Um, I had no depth perception with one eye closed, so that uh, was definitely difficult, especially this step, which was outlining. So make sure you outline the lash line as well as across the top of the eye and I decided to add a little hook and then I wanted to give it more dimension so I took some black shadow and I just put that um, underneath the top of the eye and in the inner corner. A lot of reptiles have round scales that surround their eyes so I decided to put those in really easy just um, misshapen circles around the eye and make sure they get smaller as they go in towards the inner corner of your eye. Then take yellow and I'm drying it out on my hand here to get the right consistency. You want it to be nice and dry. And put that at the top of the scales where the light would naturally hit. And this will help to give a really cool 3D effect. When you outline these, make sure you have a really thin outline. You don't want them to be 
overpowered by heavy line work. So keep your brush thin and really dry. When your brush is dry, it's easy to do super thin lines like these. To finish the scales off, I decided to give them additional highlight with some dry white paint. And as you can see, I'm kind of stippling it on to give them texture and interest. And if you'd like, you can add a shadow underneath. I'm using very, very watered down black paint to do this. I decided to give the pupil, I guess we would call it, not sure what we'd call it, um, a curved shape because I thought that looked cool. So just fill it in, all black, really easy. and finish off with highlights. Put the highlights around the rim of the eyes and then finally just put a couple dots up by where the pupil is and you're all done with the design. I really hope that you guys like this design. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and subscribe and check me out on Facebook. The link to that and all of the products I used in this video are listed down below.